Hello, this is Congressional Update with Michael Capuano. I'm Sarah Fishman. Hi, Mike. Hi, Sarah. April 2nd, we haven't done this show since October. Yeah, I know, you just told me that. I, was, I didn't realize it was the big And it's long. snowing. So we're both wearing pink, maybe to try to get some spring in to the situation, but yeah. I don't think it's going to work because it's still snowing. Okay, so lots of things to talk about. Um, I will like to start with, um, you will have an opponent in the Democratic primary, which tends to be equivalent to the full race in November, uh, Ayanna Presley, who is currently a Boston City Councilor. Were you surprised that someone has come to challenge you? Well, I'm surprised anybody challenged me ever. I, mean, I don't know, surprised. I can't say I was surprised, no. It's a, there's a lot of anger out there. A lot of people want to participate in you know, stopping Donald Trump and you know, being part of the solution. So I, I won't say I was surprised, but I won't say I wasn't surprised. Mm -hmm. So do you, uh, you met with her already, mm -hmm. yes, before she announced. Um, it, it's interesting because the, the Boston City Council is now, do you know how many women of color there are? It's five or six. Six out of 13. <clears throat> and Ayanna was the first one, and she came in in 2009. So that means in nine years, there was this dramatic change in the demographics of the Boston City Council. At least I think some people would say that was a, a big change. Um, so how, if at all, and this isn't a, I can't make this a campaign thing, but do you see yourself, is, is there a big political difference in how you guys, one or the other, would operate on Capitol Hill? I'm I mean, not aware of it. I mean, I haven't seen anything in writing or heard anything on the street that, of, of any substantive issue. Um, so if there is, I'm not aware of it. So you said in the Globe in the Globe today, I think, something about seniority. So, and you said you wouldn't use seniority as a campaign issue. But the entire article was kind of about seniority. So, let's just establish first. You are chair of what subcommittees? At the moment, uh, railroads on the transportation uh, committee. I had been the chair of housing and insurance on the financial services committee. So, would if, if the Democrats were to uh, get the majority in the fall, you would become chair of those subcommittees well, or different? It's not automatic, but it's yeah. highly likely. Okay. It would be my choice. You can only do one, so you have to pick one. Oh, really? The article didn't say that, and I should have known that. Um, so, one question is, um, there, there, there are two <coughs> Massachusetts congressmen who would become, one would be uh, chair of Ways and Means, and the other would presumptively, because he hasn't been named yet, be head of the Rules Committee. Mm -hmm. And that's Jim McGovern. And you were senior to him. No. You're not? No. He Jimmy was... McGovern is senior to me by one term. Oh. I didn't check that. Okay. All right. So are you where you want to be in terms of your stature having been... Uh, in office for 20 years? The answer is yes. I mean, you, 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 know, you don't get to write everything you want. I mean, if that were the case, I'd be, I would have won the Mega Millions yesterday. Um, but within reason, yeah. I'm, I'm actually much further beyond where I thought I might be at any given time. Really? Yeah. Where, where, what did you think? I never really thought about it. I mean, I'm, I'm one of those guys that puts one step in front of the other each day. I don't really have this long-term plan of where I'm going to be in 5 or 10 or 15 years. Do you think Nancy Pelosi should remain head of the leader? I, 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 here's what I think. I think, first of all, we need to win the House. Do you, think I, we, do you think the Democrats will? I think we have a very good chance of doing that. And if we win the House, I suspect that Nancy Pelosi will continue to be the leader of the Democratic Party. Um, not the least of which reason is because she would have been leading us back into the majority, and I think victory deserves recognition. Hmm. Because I thought in the past there was some... In the past, where we, when we lost 60 seats in one year, I thought that like the manager of the Red Sox, that when you lose 60 games, um, there should be changes. Not because those changes, not because somebody's bad. Well, John Farrell wasn't a bad manager, it just happens. And, you know, something wasn't working. And up until now, we're still down 24 seats. And you know that being the case, you know that's that's a to me that's a real problem. I'm going to have to check with my son on this because I don't know if that's a a fair comparison with what? the base. I, I don't know. I don't know enough about sports, but I, I feel well, like I, he might have a. I know enough that when, okay, when, you when, think when, that, this, when the that that's when teams don't win, the first guy to go usually, oftentimes, is the is the manager. 
Okay, so um, one of the things that's obviously different between you and Ayana is she, <coughs> excuse me, is a younger black woman and you are an older white male. And the district, I wish there was a better term for this. The congressional district is, it's very kind of funny shaped. I don't know if people can see this. Can you see that? Am I pointing it the wrong way? It, it sort of looks like New Jersey. Um, and it was redrawn after the 2010 census. So why, was it redrawn that way to be more inclusive? Yes. Okay. So it is now what is called, and this is the phrase I don't like, a majority minority district. Um, so how much, if at all, is this a factor? It, it's been a majority minority district now for many, many years. Before that redistricting, it was then as well. Um, and so you, that, it, people talk about it like it's something new. I've represented a majority non-white district for the entire time I've been in Congress. Really? It's been yeah. that long? 20 yes. years? Yes. Okay, now and it changed because there, before well, there it's were... It's become more of a majority non-white district because they redrew Because the they redrew it in 2010. But okay. to me, even raising this point implies that people vote only along racial lines or gender lines. Uh, first of all, I find that a little offensive. I find that uh, demeaning to a certain extent. I think people vote for the best person on the ballot. I know that gender and race play a factor in some people's voting. Always have, always will. It is not the majority. If that were the case, we never would have had Deval Patrick as governor or Barack Obama as president. Um, I just, um, and, and every elected official at every level would be a woman because women outnumber men right. in every district in the country on the state, federal, and local level. All that being said, clearly people don't vote that way. So the fact that people keep driving this particular nail into the board, though it's interesting, it's an interesting statistical fact, I think it's demeaning to the voters to think, to, to think and presume and to imply that they are one-dimensional voters. Well, Most I didn't people mean are to... Not. Not, I didn't mean I did to... Not you. You're not the first one to raise the issue. But the issue to me is, yeah, it's an interesting little factoid. What does that have to do with it? Okay, no, no, no. That's not a factoid. That's demographics. Here's a factoid. That's Here's a, a quiz. Factoid. Okay, what is Ayanna Presley's cat's name? I have no idea. Sojourner Truth. Okay, that's a factoid. It's okay, just let's less than get a factoid, our less mate. Perhaps so. If it were a dog, I don't know. Um, okay, so what do you think? going to happen? Do you think this will be a grueling race or do you think it will be a I intend to take it fully seriously. As I said, right from the beginning, people are angry and I don't blame them. I'm pretty angry. And to be perfectly honest, people are not angry in my opinion. They're not paying much attention. Uh, the anger is mostly directed at Donald Trump, but there's also some of the Me Too, there's some of the Black Lives Matter, there's now some of the gun issue. All of those issues I have a great record on, but sometimes General anger has a way of focusing... Of uh, trumping. Of trumping uh, facts and, and, and records, and I have no intention of allowing that to happen. What? I know that people don't agree with me on every issue. I know that. That's never been Well, the that's case. not possible. Well, that's, it's impossible. It's exactly right. So I, if people are going to vote for me or vote against me, I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that they do it based on what I have done and what I'm likely to do or what she may do or what she's done, not on the other issues. What is the NRA? We're segueing. What is the NRA rate you? F. I'm a very proud recipient of okay. that F. Okay. And have forever. Okay. So now you went to one of the March for Our Lives yes. rallies. Did you go to one in Boston? I went to one in Boston. With people from Randolph. Um, so what did that, what was that like? I didn't go. I wasn't here. What, what was it like? Um, Were there, do you think other Congress people went? Yeah, I know they did. Okay. I know they did. Um, what it was like. I mean, a vendor rally was like, it was very much like the, the Women's March in, in last January. I mean, this, this is an important issue that people are finally grasping onto in a greater and a broad seg segment of the community. Um, I think it's an important issue, long overdue, and it's great to see America um, kind of activating on the issue. Uh, we'll see young if, America. Young Amer it's, it's the first time I've seen young people as a whole gravitate towards one issue in, in, in a long time. And I, and I hope they stay there because they have grabbed... Because it's scary they, because it hits well, they've home. Grabbed, but they've grown, the, Amongst other reasons. But it, it, this is not the first massacre we've had. We had right. little children in, in Sandy Hook. We've had you know, people in movie theaters. It happens. Stockton, and, California. It, it, yeah, happen, it happens, years unfortunately, ago. regularly. This is the first time that I've seen across the country that we have young people motivated on one issue, and I hope they stay motivated. What if do they don't, think, we will lose. Why again. do you think that 
unity is there? I don't know. It's hard to tell. I mean, I, th I think part of it has to do with this particular high school. Is, uh, it's, a, it's a relatively upper middle class high school, so these kids seem to be well spoken. Uh, they seem to be active and, and motivated. They seem to have the support of their parents. They don't have to be parents. worrying about basic uh, daily needs of living. Well, again, I, I don't know them, so yeah. I don't know them individually, yeah. but I mean, that, it's from a distance. But my answer is, you know what? It doesn't matter to me. What matters is they're actually doing it. It seems to be working. And I hope they can continue doing it until we have some victories. Do you think victories. it's sustainable, and do you think it'll make a difference? If, if it sustains itself, it will make a difference. If, if not, if in a week or three or four or five weeks from now, we stop talking about it and it's out of the news, then it will be just another moment in time. So, I think that's got a chance of not being the case. I think it might be the beginning so of the So what makes you think that? Um, because of, the, of what I've seen. I mean, the, for instance, in, before the march, I met with the alumni from this high school. I think there was give or take 20 or 30 of them. And they're motivated across the country. That's in just Somerville, one, right? Uh, we met in Somerville, yes. Yeah. But I mean, they're, they're from all over the greater Boston area. And that's something. It's not just high school kids from Florida who are doing this. Other high school kids, some of Ohio, has been a great leader on this. Yes. Uh, and, and so therefore, if it stays active and it stays nation, national, we have a chance of actually moving the needle on this. And I hope that's the case. We'll find out. Hopefully. So the specifics, let's see, I'm going to cheat. Um, in terms of momentum, this is what I should ask. In terms of momentum, after the massacre in Las Vegas, there was all this talk about um, banning bump stocks, yep. things that you could put on guns to make right. them more rapid yep. fire. So that sort of seemed like an obvious thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, Massachusetts was actually the first state that then banned bump stocks after that. Did you know that? Yes, I did. Uh, so um, how, so there was momentum that got carried through in the sense that there was action at the state level, but you know, multiple states didn't do anything and there's all this variation and there are so many other parts to gun control. How, how does one, I mean, how does one take that student or other activism and, and make it well, when everything translate said into done, regulation? They're, gonna, they're probably going to have to do it on a statewide level uh, first. But my hope is that this carries over to the November elections and allows Democrats to take the House over. If we do, I will guarantee you there will be gun control legislation on the floor of the House and it will pass. And it will pass with Republican votes because there are many Republicans who, if they are forced to vote on this, will vote the right way. So is it... What would it be? Would it be a, a, a waiting period or what? what well, my guess is it'd probably or? be a whole series of things. My okay. hope is it would be separate because some people would vote. I mean, for instance, the bump stock, it should be a national ban, not a statewide ban. Um, I agree. Closing uh, uh, the, the background checks, uh, the loopholes we have in the background checks law, that's easy. Uh, doing some stuff on mental health, that's easy. Uh, there, there are several relatively, I would consider them low hanging fruit that every reasonable person could, could agree on that I hope we do. For instance, I know that I personally would be more than willing to do an assault weapons ban. That may be more difficult to pass, which is why I hope it's a standalone bill. It's people really wanna... hard for some people, well, at least for me, to. it seems so counterintuitive I why there that. should be any civilian use I, for that. I get that. So they... we, could, we could have that argument all day long, but if they tie that to other bills, right. we may make no progress. I'm just not so sure. So it was banned from 1994 to yes. 2004 at yes. the federal level. That's right. And then it went away. Um, it was actively taken away. It didn't just go away. Yeah. Okay. So there are all these different, is there any one or two um, components of gun reform that you think are more important than the others? More important is one thing. More, more likely to pass is another. I, that was the next question. Well, for me, I focus on what's most likely to pass. I th really think we can do something about closing those loopholes in the, in the background check. I really think we can do something on b uh, bump stocks nationally. I really think we might be able to do something on high capacity uh, nationally. We might be able to do something on age nationally. I'm not sure about that one. Maybe. And for me, I'd like individual votes on those items. That way, people can vote their conscience and, and stand up be to the voters and be held accountable to voters. I voted for these things, but I didn't vote for that or whatever the issue might be. Then let their own voters decide. I, I know this is representing a single perspective, but the Giffords um, Gun Law Center website is, has every little yes. thing dissected. And it, it is just so complicated because it, it, it's not a 
a monolithic That's right. issue. Not, not, there are no monolithic issues, but, but th this, one has, seemed... this one has, I think, identifiable pieces that could pass the Congress if given the opportunity to vote on it. And that's what people don't understand. The legislative process, as long as the Republicans are in charge, we will not get a chance to vote on these because they control the agenda. They will not put these bills on the floor of the House. I believe firmly that if Democrats control the House, we will put them on the floor of the House and allow people to vote. And when they do, there are people like me who want to vote for these things, and there are some other people who may not want to, so but will. what do you tell someone, I mean, this isn't a new question, but what do you tell someone who, who comes up and says, I know so-and-so whose son was shot and killed at place X. No. Um, you guys aren't doing anything. What, what is the response you The give? response is very simple. Is that I, I explain to them how the system works. I explain to them that that's the broad brush that you guys aren't doing anything is not accurate. It's not fair. It presumes that I am the same thing as Donald Trump and not just me, that we all are. Mm -hmm. um, like every issue, there are those who agree with you and those who don't. Those who agree with the, these issues right now, we are the minority. We have to become the majority, and therefore people need to be activated and understand that the only way to move legislation forward is to have the right people in office to make sure that that happens. Mm -hmm. Okay, one quick thing, which is I always read, you know, it, it always says, like in articles, Massachusetts, which has one of the strictest gun control yeah. set of laws in the country. And I don't know if that's, well, it, it's not as true as it sounds. So do you know which state has, um, covering many of these issues, considered to have the, the most restrictive gun regulations? Everybody tells me it's Massachusetts, and if you want to count D.C. as a state, you might want to do that. I, th I think it's California. I, I mean, according to Giffords, that's what it is. And then Massachusetts, Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, Maryland, and Hawaii are, are next. So it's, it's, but it's not like the most, just, well, I, I don't know. I was surprised to see that. I, I haven't researched all those websites. Yeah. And if you have, I No, would... no, no. It's just the one website with the list. It's it, like and scorecard. That's, and that's their opinion, and that's fine. If yeah. Massachusetts can do more, I know that there's a bill pending right now in the legislature offered by uh, Representative Marjorie Decker from Cambridge uh, to try to do something right now. So on, what would it... What would it uh, as I understand the do? bill, it has to do with some mental health issues. So if you have a license to carry... Um, either your family or your coworkers can say, hey, um, Sarah's got some real serious problems because you may be perfectly mentally healthy today when you get your license, but over time, some things yeah, change. Yeah, that's, that's kind of a, a dicey one. I it mean, is. They're all dicey. Yeah. There is no easy way to do this, and there is yeah, no simple way to do it, personal, but I would argue that at every opportunity, you err on the side of caution. Yeah. And, uh, you know, guns, the difference between guns and everything else, if you want to kill somebody, you can do it. But a gun allows you to do it in an instant, without a second thought. Uh, any other way to kill somebody takes more thought. Doesn't mean you can't do it. It just means it's a lot more proactive and a lot less prone to accident. Um, mm. And I, I just think that guns deserve a higher attention level. Have you ever owned a gun? No, I have not. Okay. All right. Well, I think many people would agree with you on that, though it is not simple. Um, what should we do now? Because there's no good way. Oh, yes, there is a good way. So in the budget that was just passed, that at first wasn't going to be signed, and then it was going to be signed, and then something was going to be in it, and then Trump signed it. So th that was just passed. There was some gun control. Yeah. Um, so what was that about? Uh, was it about um, keeping schools safe? I, yeah, they, I, they, they did some security in schools. Uh, I don't know exactly what they did because I voted against it because th there was a throwaway item and they're going to call that a, a major victory. And it's a good victory. Uh, they closed some loophole things, if I remember some, uh, some they, background They They um, strengthened the, the background. The background check, check, but they still, there's still they significant removed, loop, loopholes. They removed the language that suggested that the CDC could not do yeah, studies Yeah, that was the, the, the Dickey deaths. Amendment. And, and, and again, so now the CDC can study it, and that's good. That's a good but step in the right direction. It. But it's, yeah, you got to fund it. And it doesn't say that those studies are going to actually lead. It, it's a good thing. It is not a major victory. It's a, it's a small step in the right direction, and I'm happy about it, but I'm not going to get all excited about it in the sense it's not going to change the next, the next massacre because the CDC can study it. Yeah. All right, well, one more question. Since I do have a 17-year-old at this high school in Somerville, it is on the brain. Um, so the school security portion, 
in the bu budget. Mm -hmm. I think there was something about not arming teachers. There were other other elements, you know. Yeah, there was a president's proposal to give teachers guns, which is, in my opinion, insane. But that that that, for the moment, being personal, not being objective, it scares me. But that's just me. All right, so. Um, Okay, let's talk about other things that are potentially scary but uh, may or may not happen. So first of all, there's a lot of sort of um, organizational chaos or sort of uh, whack-a-mole change in personnel in the White House. <laughs> um, and in general, do you think that makes a difference in how things... Of course it makes a difference, yeah. but it also, it's not going to stop. It's not new, it just seems to have gotten worse. Yes. Um, you know, this president has been through more personnel than any president in my memory, if not in history, in the shortest period of time. Um, I don't think it's good for consistency. Again, you, you make changes, I get that, it's a big organization, but he's been through a lot of them, and they've been through not just, you know, second and third level people, these are top level people. Uh, you cannot have an administration with that kind of constant change. And, and there's talk even this week about more changes coming. We'll so, and there are two types of changes. Well, there's more than two types, but there's personnel, as in who's head of something. And then there's also, you know, policy content. So yeah. Mulvaney, the head of budget, said he wasn't going to, he was going to request um, zero dollars yes. to fund the consumer protection. Well, they did request zero dollars. And what happened? Uh, Congress ignored it. And, and so what was funded? Uh, we funded it at a lower level, but we funded it, and we're going to continue to fund it. But you have to understand that, that CFPB is a major target for the Republican Party. They're just not silly enough to try to zero it out, that they will find other ways to strangle it. It's, I, I was, um, for reasons that are complicated, declared uh, dead by um, the Banana Republic credit card people. And so I had to do a, a background credit history yep. thing, and so I had to go to all three of the... Yep. reporting services and one of them tried to charge me five dollars and I went and went everywhere on the website and tried to figure out I know it's supposed to be free and finally I just gave up and I paid, paid the five dollars yep. well that was not legal or allowed or whatever right. so I got a letter from you know the bureau saying here it's your five dollars and we're giving it back to everybody you may not have understood well because you made it not understandable anyway so I think there is a role for that agency to play. All right, John Bolton specifically, um, what is your reaction to him becoming... Scares the heck out of me. This, this guy is he's not personally, he, if you had to pick one person who was most responsible for the Iraq war, it would be John Bolton. He, well, he, not, he can't pick it on one, but if you had to pick one. At the time, he publicly and privately advocated for a war with Iran and North Korea and has continued to do so even in his private sector role. Now, he claims that all of a sudden everything he said for the last 20 years doesn't count anymore and he's going to you know, put it all in the background and move on. No, I find no, that that's not what he said, I thought. I mean, I've heard That's him say, what he's tried to say, and I don't believe it. He said, well, Lindsey Graham said that he was at least skeptical about North Korea's um, intentions. So, I mean, that, you know, that's probably a nice way of saying. He said a lot more than that. Right. In, in his, as it, when he was a private citizen. So and he's trying to he back away from it now. So he's now the new national security advisor, And right? he got that job, we think, it's hard to tell, because he never would have gotten Senate confirmation uh, as, as Secretary, Secretary of State. State. Do you know why? Uh, because he's <laughs> an extreme right wing. Well, also, at the risk of being uh, a, a little flippant, um, he was quoted by a British newspaper saying that uh, several Trump associates claim Bolton was not chosen as Secretary of State in December 2016, in part due to Trump's disdain for Bolton's signature mustache. Yeah, I've heard that. Anyway. What matters? All right, so anyway, so he now, so what's going to happen with North Korea and South Korea and North Korea and the U.S. <laughs> and the Iran nuclear agreement. Are any of these things going to fall by the wayside? Are they going to stay in situ? What, what, what do you think is going to happen? <laughs> I haven't got a clue. Uh, part of the problem is John Bolton uh, throws I me. Mean, if, if I had people there whom I respected, even if I disagree with them, uh, you could have an idea that things are going to inch forward. Uh, 
at this point in time, I haven't got a clue what John Bolton's going to do. Is you there know, nobody any... else does either? Knowing his based on his history, it's highly likely he'll walk into the room, turn the table upside down, and dare them to do something about it. Now that's an overstatement. But I don't know. Can that. anyone stop him? I mean, like sure, Donald Trump could stop him by not having appointed him. Right, but be, in addition or instead of, could the Secretary of Defense Mattis could? In theory, depends who Trump listens to. Yeah. And there's no way to tell. He just appointed him. And there is, you know, there's rumors that Mattis has been undermined and Kelly has been undermined. Yes. Who knows? This is, this is the never-ending saga of inside the White House. It's always that way. Anybody in their right mind who has watched what this president has done knows that it's been 10 times worse in the last year and a half than it's ever been in modern history. If this were a soap opera and I were no an one actor, would I would not, well, I would not sign up for the role because it would not exist for so long, very long. And you wouldn't know what, what, what pot to play next week. It's right, just, okay. It's, so let's slightly s shift. Mueller and his investigation, um, what do you think is going to happen with that? Will that end in any um, smoking gun that could end? I don't know. I hope so. I mean, I, I, let's put this way. I believe that Donald Trump's campaign did collude with the Russians. I, I believe that it probably didn't have a lot of impact on the election, but they tried to have an impact that was on the my election. next question. Um, yeah, but I also think that he has massive conflicts of interest going on with his family and his own business associates, and he's not the only one in the administration. So, and I believe that they tried to cover it up. That's all my beliefs on the basis of news reports. But is that and like... I, but I, I want to be real clear. I would not convict somebody on the basis of news reports. That's what Mr. Mueller is doing. But if, and once if he that's... finishes, we'll make a determination then as to whether my fears and current beliefs are actually held out to be true. But even if all that is true, is that actionable? Is that enough to make any... In my opinion, it is. We'll have to wait and see who's in Congress. Hmm. Because it seems to me that unless it's something really, really big... You well, it says high crimes and misdemeanors. misdemeanors. That's what yeah. the Constitution says. Yeah. I would actually think it is a pretty high crime to steal an election or to try to steal the election of the president. I think that's kind of a high crime. Uh, I think it is clearly a high crime and or misdemeanor to use the presidency to enrich your own family. That's the emoluments. That's the emoluments clause. Now, again, I, I can only know what I know based on news reports. My Wait, you watch TV all day? Is that what you're Not saying? all day, no, but I do. I am familiar with the current news of the day. I would not convict anybody on any level based on what's in the media. It is, it, 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 I can add it up, but that's what Mr. Mueller is doing, actually getting facts, actually getting figures, actually getting documentation, actually getting witnesses, none of which I have access to. Yeah. So I know that some of my constituents want me to, you know, t draw a conclusion right this minute, and I have drawn my own personal conclusion, but it is a s conclusion that could change if Mueller comes back and says, look, we've done this full investigation, and it looks like this, but here's what we found, and it's not that. I would be open to that. I don't believe that to be the case. I believe that he will find that there Something. have been these actions, but I think it's important for the process and for America to wait until that happens. I have voted twice already to institute proceedings to begin an impeachment. Not a conclusion about an impeachment, but I do think that Congress is not doing our job to have simultaneous hearings with Mr. Mueller's investigation. Um, well, I think Congress should be doing that. Well, on that note, we need to conclude that you are doing something. This has been Congressional Update with Michael Capuano. Have a good day.